Learn to lead. We make winners who lead. Hello students. Greetings from Firebird Institute of Research and Management, the institute which offers the best PGDM and international MBA. We are going to conduct tips and tricks to score 600 plus in the upcoming Feb Mat 2023, a free, free webinar on Feb 12th Sunday at 7 p.m. The highlights of the webinar are, we are going to discuss Feb 2023 math question paper analysis and also we are going to compare December, Feb and September 2022 question paper analysis. So join us this webinar on Feb 12th Sunday at 7 p.m. And also we are going to give you some speed max tricks for data interpretation. Nowadays, the questions based on data interpretations are very tough. So we are going to give you the tips to solve this data interpretation in the upcoming Feb Mat 2023 examination. To enroll for this webinar, visit the description box where we have provided the registration link. All the best students. Join our second national level mock test on till February 10th. If you want to register for this second level second national level mock test, we have provided a link in the description box. So by attending the second national level mock test, you will come to know your ability to crack the upcoming Feb Mat examination. The national level mock test question paper is designed based on the latest pattern of Feb Mat 2023. All the best students. And coming back in this video, we are going to teach you few questions that were asked in the December Mat 2022 session. Here in this video, you are going to get some details about data interpretation and analysis. And now let us move on to this video for data interpretation, question and answer part three. Okay, let's see the first question which is based on data analysis. Mohan has two brothers and one sister. How many brothers does Shyam have? The first statement is Mohan and Shyam are brothers. Second statement, Shyam has one sister. See here, if the question can be answered using one of the statement, your answer should be option A. If the question can only be answered using the statement one and two together, one and two together, your answer should be option B. If the question cannot be answered even by using statement one and two together, option C. If the question is faulty, you have to choose option D. Okay, now see here. If the question can be answered using only one statement, any one of the statement, you should choose your option as option A. Okay, see Mohan and Shyam are brothers. And in the question, they have said that Mohan has two brothers. Mohan has two brothers. Let us take it as brother one and brother two. Okay, and one sister. Mohan and Shyam are brother. Let us take brother one as Shyam. And Shyam will have now two brothers. Okay, I can answer with statement one. Okay, now see here if I go for the option, if the question can only be answered using the statements one and two together, if the question cannot be even answered, they have asked. So, but my let me take correct the option B because only if I combine both the statements, I can come to a conclusion that. Mo, uh, Shyam has two brothers. So, the correct answer for this question is option B. Let us see the next question. Present Prem is the eldest son. What is the current age of his mother? Present age of Prem is 25 and that of his sister Pushpa is 20 years. Now, they are asking what is the current age of his mother? See, if I take, the, we need to find the exact value if I take the second statement, with the first statement alone, I cannot answer. In the first statement, they have just given the ages of Prem and Pushpa. If I take the second statement, Pushpa's present age is one third of their mother's age. Okay. See, if I take Pushpa's age as 20, his mo her mother's age will be 60. Only if I combine both the statement, I can come to a conclusion and I can find the answer. That is, her mother's age is... 60. Okay. See, if the question can only be answered using the statements 1 and 2 together is your option. Okay. Option B is your answer. Next. 
Next. The average of three bid prices for a bottle of sanitizer is 120. What is the highest bid price? See, if I take the three bit sanitizer price as X, Y, Z and its average is 120, what is the total cost of three sanitizers? It is 360. See, the lowest bid price is 90. Okay. Then the other cost of two bid prices will be 360 minus 90, 270. So I need to find the highest bid price. With this alone, I cannot find the highest bid price. So if I take the third, second statement data, one of the bid is 125. So if I subtract 270 minus 125, the reminder is 270 minus 100. Yes, 145. That is your answer. So the highest bid price is 145. Only if I combine both the statements, I can get the answer. So your question option is B. Answer is B for this question. Okay, now. Now, what is the time difference between Johannesburg and Mumbai? The departure time at Johannesburg is 6 p.m. Local time and arrival time at Delhi is 6 a.m. Okay, local time and arrival time at Delhi is 6 a.m. The flight duration is 8 hours. Okay, now, see here. If they started at 6 p.m. And after 8 hours of travel... Okay, they will arrive at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay, they will arrive at 2 a.m. As per the time at Johannesburg, but the time at Delhi during that time is 6 a.m. So, what is the time difference? 4 hours. Only if I combine both the statements, I can get the answer. Okay, so my answer is option B. Let us move to the question based on data interpretation. Study the following line graph given information about the imports and exports of a Pacific island nation and answer the question that follows. So the first point is 0 0.65 and next 0 0.85. And in the 2012, the point is 0 0.35. And 2013, it is 1.25. And in 2014, it is 1.4. And in 2015, it is 0.95. 2016, it is 1.53. Okay. So, do you understand this? So, 0 0.65, 0 0.85, 0 0.35, 0 0.1.25, 1.4. Okay. Now, they have given here the ratio of imports to exports. Okay. The values are given. Now, let us move on to the question. So, this question was little bit easy when compared to the other question. One question, definitely, they will ask in an easy way. Okay, ma. Now see, I'll write the imports to exports ratio in each year. In 2010, the import to export ratio is 2.65. In 2011, 0.85. In 2012, 0.35. 2013, 1.25. 2014, 1.4. 0.95 and in 2016 it is 1.53 in how many years were the exports more than imports see here they have given the ratio of imports to exports if the export is more okay your answer will be the ratio will be less than one what are the values which are less than one how many values are less than one one two three four so four values are less than one so your answer for this question is option b four okay now let us move to the next question. See here. If the import of the nation in 2011 was 272 million, what about the export? In 2011, the import to export ratio is 0.85. And if the import is 272 million, what about the exports? So divided by export is equal to 0.85. And 272 divided by 0.85 is equal to export. And export is equal to 272 divided by 85 by 100, you can take it as into 100. So 20 times, 17 times, 17 1 times. And here if I say strike out in terms of uh, 17 table, I'll get around 16. So 16 into 20, 320 is my answer. So option B is my answer. So this question is a little bit simple when compared to the other previous two questions which I was discussed 
in the previous videos so i'll give you the link for those pre previous videos which involves which involved more calculations definitely out of four to five data interpretation three data interpretation will be very tough it will involve more a calculation part so just fasten up your calculation now the import was minimum in proportion to the exports in the year see in 2010 import to export ratio is 0.65 if i want to represent 0.65 in the form of ratio it is nothing but 13 by 20. in 2011 it is 0.85 17 by 20. and in 2012 0.35 7 by 20. And in 2015, 0.95, 17 by 20. So see here, import to export ratio, where it is minimum. The numerator shows the value of import and denominator shows the value of export. So in option C, see 7 by 20, the import is very low. It is minimum in the year 2012 when compared to other years. So the answer for my question is option C. Okay, so you should know percentage to fraction conversion unless you know it is very difficult to answer the question. Okay, now let us move on to the next question. If the import in 2031 was 250 dollar million and the total export in 2013 and 2014 together was dollar 500 million, then the import in 2014 was so that is a big question mark, right? Now, see, import in 2013, 250 million. Okay. And total export, see, if it is 250 million in 2013, in import to export ratio is 1.25. If import is 250 million, 250 divided by export is equal to 1.25. So export is equal to 250 divided by 1.25. I can solve this like 250 divided by 1.25. You can consider it as 125 into 100. So one times, two times, the export will be 200. In 2013, if import is 250, import is 250 and the export will be 200. And then in the next data, they have given that in 2013 and 2014 together, the export is 500 million. See, the export is 500 million. See, if I add 2013 and 2014 together, the export is what? 500 million. Okay, let us see. And I know that in 2013 alone, export is 200. And then what about export in 2014? The remaining 300 million. Okay. Now, what is the import to export ratio in 2014? It is 1.4. So, import by 300 into 1.4. So, import is equal to 300 into 1.4, which is equal to 420 is your answer. So, the answer for this question is 420. This is how you should solve. Okay. Now, see, let us move on to the next question. What was the percentage increase in imports from 2012 to 2013? See, here they, are, they have asked percentage increase in imports from 2012. In 2012, I know it is 0.35. I know only the ratio of import to export, but I don't know the ratio of the value of correct inputs, right? So I cannot find the correct answer. So the answer is data inadequate. Okay, the answer for my question is data inadequate. I hope you all got some information about how to solve data interpretation as well as data analysis question. Don't join, forget to join us at Feb Mat 2023 free online webinar on Feb 12th at 7 p.m. Sunday. The highlights of the webinar are 
we are going to discuss feb 2023 math question paper analysis and also we are going to compare september 2022 december 2022 and feb 2023 question paper so that if you attend this webinar definitely you will get some ideas about how to crack your upcoming feb math 2023 examination and with that you can definitely improve your score level so don't forget to join us this webinar on sunday coming sunday feb 12th at 7 pm to register for this webinar we have provided the link in the description box don't forget to register for this webinar and also if you want to check your preparation level attend our second national level test conducted by fiber institute of research and management which offers the best coaching best courses like pgdm and international mba the last day to apply for the second national level webinar is oh sorry second national level mock test is on feb 10 2023 all the best students learn to lead we make winners who lead